Hi, welcome to Chemistry 1001. We're talking about states of matter. Let's look a little bit at the forces that exist between liquid and solid states. Um, the forces uh, between gases are relatively weak, mainly because they are very far apart. Here we see the molecules very small in relationship to how far they normally are in the gaseous state, whereas in a liquid, they're bumping up against each other. So the forces of attraction are much stronger. In this case, the liquid nitrogen and the nitrogen gas are both, in equal, uh, both next to each other, touching each other, so they're both uh, essentially at the same temperature. They're at the same temperature, so they both have the same amount of kinetic energy. They have the same amount of kinetic energy because uh, kinetic energy depends on the root mean square velocities and those things are the same in, the, in this case. But uh, the forces of attraction in the liquid nitrogen are stronger because the molecules are closer together. Let's do a very quick review of the types of intermolecular forces that we have. Uh, in talking about forces between gases and liquids and solids. Here's the table of the classic forces that we have. Uh, the strongest forces we have are iron-iron or iron-dipole forces. Iron-iron forces would be the kinds of forces that you would get between a sodium plus iron and a chlorine minus iron in an ionic crystal. There are also ion-dipole forces, for example, a sodium iron attracted to a water molecule. The water molecule has a dipole, meaning to say it has a negative end to the molecule, which is the oxygen, and a positive end, which is more or less on the hydrogen side. The negative end of the hydrogen attracts to the positive end of the sodium ion in water. So that's an iron dipole force. And uh, here is the example over here. And we have the typical energies around about 40 to 600 kilojoules per mole. These are very, very strong forces. Iron, iron forces are very strong in, in the hundreds of kilojoules per mole and iron di dipoles would be in the tens. The next strongest force are the dipole-dipole forces. So those are the forces, for example, between water molecules or between HCl molecules or between HCl molecules and other dipole type molecules where there's an uneven distribution of charge. Uh, molecules which have an even distribution of charge would be, for example, the methane molecule, CH4, in a tetrahedral shape. That does not have a dipole because it's, uh, each of its molecules are, uh, uh, bonds are symmetrically distributed around the carbon. Then we have hydrogen bonding. I'm sorry, those ones are about tens of kilojoules per mole. Hydrogen bonding is, uh, you know what that is, uh, the attraction for a lone hydrogen attached to an ele electronegative atom X, which can be fluorine, nitrogen or oxygen. And that uh, electronegative XH bond pulls the electrons away from the hydrogen, exposing the positive charge and the positive charge can then attract to lone electron pairs on another molecule. That's called the hydrogen bond, represented by dot, dot, dot. Um, you can get that in water-water interactions, uh, water uh, ammonia type interactions in the liquid state or in the crystalline state. These are an extremely important interactions in biology, almost all of the material which is living relies on many hydrogen bonds to hold it together. And they are relatively weak, around about 5 to 30 uh, kilojoules per mole. And they are about the energy difference due to thermal variation. So that means temperature changes can cause changes in hydrogen bonding. And that's important for biological systems. So regular temperatures can break the, and form these bonds. And that's why they're so important. There are dipole, dipole, uh, dipole, induced dipole forces. This is where a dipole, uh, a negative positive end of a molecule, actually induces a dipole in a neighboring molecule. 
for example, here's a dipolar water molecule, and the negative end will actually suck electrons from I2, which doesn't naturally have a dipole. That will force it to have a positive end and a negative end. It doesn't normally, so it has an induced dipole, and this induced dipole interacts with the dipole, permanent dipole, the permanent dipole of water. And this is a very weak interaction. And finally, we have the induced dipole, induced dipole, or London dispersion forces. Sometimes I just call them dispersion forces. They can be 0.05 to 40 uh, kilojoules per mole per, between per atoms. They're quite large for iodine because uh, the more electrons that a molecule have, has, the more polarizable it is, and the more likely it is to have these dispersion interactions. As a matter of fact, uh, every molecule has dispersion interactions uh, involved in it, including ionic uh, crystals. Uh, it's just that the ionic forces are much stronger than the dispersion interactions. It can also be that for very large molecules, the dispersion forces become extremely large. So it's not to say that these are completely negligible for molecules which have no dipole, uh, uh, the dispersion forces can be extremely strong. Don't neglect them.